around. Everybody's okay. Okay. Deep breath. Okay. Well, Paul Williams was knocked out in the second round in his last fight back in November by Sergio Martinez. Vowed that things would be different, but there is Landy Lara has hit Williams repeatedly with power shots and left hands and has clearly, in a lot of ways, dominated this fight. Williams, who's always been a warrior his entire career in spite of physical advantages that would indicate he wouldn't have to fight that way, is wearing the face of a warrior right now, bloodied and battered, but he's still coming. He's still coming, but he's not coming with the same aggression that we used to see in Paul Williams come with. Meanwhile, Lara, at 154 pounds, who's going to be really anxious to get in with him? I'm not saying he's the best fighter in the division, but Miguel Cotto, Sergei Zanzirik, um, Canelo Alvarez, uh, Angulo, Bundridge, uh, I don't see any of those guys as prohibitive favorites against Rolara. You know, and you showed that graphic uh, of the division, and with Cintron losing decisively tonight to Carlos Molina, maybe the next time we do a 154-pound fight, Lara's picture makes your cut. <laughs> After this fight, and no way around that. Maybe Molina's picture <laughs> should make the cut. <laughs> maybe those two should do it again. That's exactly right. Can Paul Williams land that punch that Rico Ramos landed in the seventh round against Shimoda when he was down in all three judges' cards and knocked him out with a left? It's his oh only God. shot. Instead, he takes another vicious. And what's he do, hand. Bob? He comes right after. E even harder. Even harder. <laughs> after after getting his head flown for 12 rounds. A vicious left hand coming off a second round knockdown, knockout on a shot like that comes back even harder. A lot of heart. You can't ask for much more heart than this. Well, he's been a warrior. He's a great kid. Is this the final 40 seconds in the career of Paul Williams? Maybe. He's still trying. It's not on Lars' head. It doesn't look good either, though. <laughs> Williams keeps losing his trunks. The Max head was a little small on the backside earlier. I guess it's kind of evident now. <laughs> And give all the credit in the world to Irislandi Lara because he stuck with the game plan and was able to land those long lefts when he needed to, and he raises his hand in victory. A sort of half-hearted raise of the hand from Paul Williams. And the face tells the story. Lara's right there with anyone in the 154-pound division, I think. I told you most of the Cuban fighters are. The final round, Lara landed 13 of 30 power shots. Williams just 21% in the fight in the power category. You're a bad mother, Paul. You're bad, baby. Blow, 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 Paul. Roy, just tremendous, tremendous sort of discipline by Lara to stick with what was working let's take a look at the judges al bennett from new jersey 19 title fights he had hopkins decision over tarver he had it for hopkins in the fight donald gibbons no title fights notable fights on the resume and hilton whitaker from new jersey seven title fights had judah's decision over matisse he had it for judah 114 113. See Harold's scorecard, 117-111. He did give the last round to Williams, but he had it 9-3 in favor of Lara. Impressive performance by Iris Landi Lara. I asked him yesterday, did he think Paul Williams was making a mistake by accepting a fight against him? He said yes, he knew it. And I asked, too, who 
allow Paul to make this decision to take this guy. I thought it was not a great fight for Paul Williams, that is. Flash of heads open up the cut on the left eye for Williams. 39 and 2 coming into this fight as two losses were to Southpaws. It looks like loss number three is going to come to a Southpaw as well. And he just got hit repeatedly with those left hands. Well, how did the judges have it scored? The man holding the scorecards, Joe Antonacci. Boxing fans, after a 12 round war, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Al Bennett scores about 114. 114 even. Judge Hilton Whitaker scores the bout 115 114. And Judge Don Gibbons scores the bout 116 114. Both for your winner by majority decision from Aiken, South Carolina, Paul the Punisher. Williams! Well, the boos tell the story here in Atlantic City. You know, they have all kinds of gaming tables. I didn't realize that they also had the shell game that you see on the street. Because, Roy, I don't know how in the world Paul Williams won a decision here. Paul Williams didn't win a decision here. This is what's wrong with boxing now. You know, this is one of our problems. We don't do athletes justice. I mean, if he won, he won. If he lost, he lost. Goodness sakes. I mean, how can you do this to a guy? This feels like his whole career all over again. Let's take a look at the punch stats and total punches. And Williams busy. Lara landed 24 more punches at 42%. And the power numbers, I mean, Lara landed at 49%. He pummeled Williams with left hands. And we take a look at the punch. He's landed to the body, 41 by Williams. To the head, Lara landed 183. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's a joke. I mean, for real. For real. But anybody watching that fight at home, I, I defy them to say that they thought Paul, Paul Williams thought he lost. Paul Williams' trainer said it from the ninth round on you're gonna have to knock this guy out you're losing this fight you saw at the end of the fight paul williams raised his hand half-heartedly he didn't think he won got the decision he's with max Congrat congratulations paul on yet another courageous performance it was a courageous performance but we heard in the corner your trainer george peterson say you need a knockout to win heading into the 12th you said i know Indicating you both thought that you'd already lost the fight on the cards How do you explain that decision? That's motivation. You know what I'm saying? He said that to motivate me You know what I'm saying? I know every time we get in there, you know what I'm saying? If I ain't performing like I normally perform at the top of my level He'll say that, you know what I'm saying? This is so I can pick it up And as you see when I came out, I started picking it up, picking it up, picking it up, keeping the pressure and stuff Do you believe you won that fight? Oh, of course I believe I won the fight. I know it was a close fight I know Lower hit me with some nice shots and all that, but you know the judges, are, hey, you got to talk it over the judges. You and I talked at your training camp about how many fights you'd have left. You guys mentioned two, maybe three fights. If you could get a Martinez rematch, or rubber match, rather, that would be it for you. How many more fights do you have left? I got me and Mr. Me and Mr. Peterson side on, but we definitely want Martinez, you know what I'm saying, before I go on out. You know, I think the fans want to see it. I know y'all want to see it, so why not? Do you believe that tonight's performance is enough to convince the boxing public that you could reverse the outcome of a Martinez fight in a rubber match? Of course, because they know I'm going to fight to the end. You know what I'm saying? Lower him with some nice, good shots and stuff. And they saw us right back in there. You know what I'm saying? But with me, it's what you see is what you get. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to duck for nobody. I'm not going to go down for nobody unless they put me down. But I'm going to be fighting the whole three minutes the whole time. No one would ever question your championship heart and courage and, and work ethic, Paul but he seemed to continually catch you with the same kind of shot that Martinez caught you, an overhand left. You didn't seem to have an answer. Why was he able to hit you with that shot so easily? Because, you know, I was being lazy in there, you know. I think if I would have picked it up even more, you know what I'm saying, being more fresher, you know what I'm saying, but I was just being lazy, but, you know, no excuses, you know what I'm saying. He, he was landing that punch, you know what I'm saying, so I take my hat to him. He keep landing it.
So we're going to see Paul Williams again. No changes, just more of the same, but even harder. It, it, you said it better than I can say it. Congratulations, Paul, on a courageous performance. <laughs> now, let me bring, bring in the guy who we at ringside thought won the fight by a wide margin, Arislandi Lara. Arislandi, tell us about the fight first. Bueno, la pelea fue una pelea bastante buena, ya que no sé lo que pasó, los jueces le dieron la pelea a él. Yo tuve ocho semanas de entrenamiento bien, me preparé bien y yo me creí que gané la pelea, como lo hice. It was a good fight. I don't know what the judges saw, but we did eight weeks training camp and we thought we won the fight. I don't know what the judges saw. Was the Martinez fight a blueprint for your fight against Paul? If so, how? Sí, la pelea de Martinez me sirvió mucho. Porque así creé muchas cosas, pero bueno, ¿qué vas a hacer? Los jueces lo vieron, Dios sabe por qué hacer las cosas. Yo lo único que quiero es decirle al pueblo de Atlantic City, a Miami, que yo quiero la revancha, que esto fue de tremenda mierda y todo el mundo más ha gustado con esto. The Martinez fight was a blueprint, it showed me a lot of things that I could do, but, you know, the judges saw what they saw, I can't explain it. But for the people of Miami, for the people of the U.S., I, I want a rematch and I want to prove it. It seems that the Martinez fight showed you to throw the left hand. Is that what happened? How were you able to hit him so easily with the left hand? Bueno, eso fue lo que yo dije. Yo me platiqué mucho con mi entrenador Ronnie Chi, que ahora no se encuentra conmigo porque tuvo otra pelea importante por allá. Pero bueno, me preparé bien. Eso fue lo que yo dije. Conecté los mejores golpes. Ya él que trabajó un poco, pero bueno, no me no me hizo ningún daño y yo todo el tiempo lo tuve dañando. That's what we did with Ronnie Shields. We threw the, the we practiced the left. We were trying to be first. And he wasn't here tonight because of, of another fight. But that's where we practice in the gym and trying to be first. Your plan is you'd like a rematch with Paul Williams? Claro, quiero una revancha para demostrarle al pueblo y al mundo que yo soy mejor que Paul Williams. Of course I want a rematch. I want to show the people of the world that I'm better than Paul Williams. Thank you, Arislandi, for an excellent performance in a fight that I consider a win for you. I think everyone who watches the fight will agree. Thank you very much, Bob. All right, thank you very much, Max. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird because uh, it looked like he did a tremendous job. Harold Letterman, we <laughs> all had it uh, pretty much in Lara's favor. Uh, your final thoughts on the scoring? You know, you know, Bob. What it boils down to it, I've said this many times. When you have a high-profile fight like this, you have to use the best judges you've got, and they didn't do that here in New Jersey tonight. That 